Well, good day there, podcaster. Ben here, giving you a heads up on what to look out for in this pod. Um, Liam goes to Judge Judy's house. That's a bit of fun. Also, Bell asked the question, have you flashed? And we asked, did you have a front row seat to some PDA? It's a great podcast. Enjoy. Live across Australia, this is Ben, Liam and Bell's Late Drive. On Nova. Love rap. Bell's a love rap. 2410, were you married for less than a year? Uh, Billy Ray Cyrus has just filed for divorce after just seven months of marriage. Don't tell my heart, my achy, breaky heart. She broke his achy, breaky heart. Well, oh, I mean, I don't know. It, they've said it's because of inappropriate marital conduct. I don't know who's behind. I see. We cannot point you fingers. You think he's been putting the mullet to use. Okay. <laughs> All righty. Well, uh, Belinda in Brizzy joins us now. You were also married for less than a year? Yes, I was. Probably about 11 months and two weeks in oh. total. So who's counting? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, you almost could have just done another two weeks and you just would have got over that, that year. But why? What happened? Um, well, he was in the army and so he was. Um, there was a distance thing involved and mm-hmm. then there was some family health issues involved that... Um, yeah, we just decided that long distance, I couldn't stop him doing his dream. Oh, let him go. So, oh, yeah. Belinda. But, I mean, surely you would have known that sort of going in into yeah. the situation, no, right? No, no, no. Not about the posting away. That okay. That came up as a surprise. Mm, so, yeah. 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 It was to SAS, so um, he wanted to do it. So can't hold someone back from doing something like that. Oh, good on you, Belinda. Well, you know, oh. if you love him, let him go, as the old fable goes. Uh, Siobhan in Brisbane. Uh, this is your friend. How long were they married for? Uh, they were married for 12 days. Oh! oh. Yeah. <laughs> what happened? Yeah. Um, I believe it came out that he ended up cheating on her um, around the 12-day mark. And, yeah, I believe he took off with all of the wishing well money. Oh, men are pigs. <sighs> they really are. Hey! He took the wishing. I know the cheating's bad, but he took the wishing well money as well. That's wild. The ink's yeah. barely dry, right? Yeah. I know. That was just the salt in the wound, I think. Oh, oh dude. 12 days is crazy. I mean, like, is, that, is that the point where the paperwork hasn't even gone through? So you wouldn't even have to file for divorce. You just go, hang on, stop that. Yeah, I don't know. You might just be able <laughs> to put out. a hold on it. Yeah. <laughs> Siobhan, thank you very much. Paula in Melbourne, good evening. Did the marriage last less than a year? Three months. Oh, and what happened? So I had quite a high-powered job, and I was in Scotland in England at the time. So I missed my flight, so I decided to drive home back to Cambridge. Mm-hmm. And it took me 12 hours to drive home, and I got to the garage, and I thought, oh, you know what, I won't get my keys. Paul will be in the house. Had my luggage in my arms, and I rang the doorbell, and this, my best friend oh. answered my front my front door oh. wearing my dressing gown. No! Then she, and the funny part is, then she closed the door and then my front door in my face and then my ex-husband comes to the door. Oh, it's not what you think. And I just said that. I thought, you know what? I've just driven 12 hours. I said, you know what? I'm done. Wow. And I, did, I, I took him and I got him for tax evasion as well. Oh. So, yeah, I took him to court, got him for tax evasion. So, yeah, I was quite pleased, but, yeah. Paula, I mean, it's like something straight out of love, actually, but did you find out, were they doing this before the marriage or was this just a yep. recent thing? Yeah, she was my bridesmaid. Oh. And they'd been sleeping together before that? Yep. Oh, oh. what a mole. Oh. They made a mockery of you, Paula. I'm glad, oh. you, I'm glad you took you to the cleaners. Oh, absolutely. Paula. He's been six months in jail. Oh, that, oh, wow. Geez, you, put him, you put him in prison. I mean, what was he What was he doing with his dad? Absolutely. Oh, wow. What a way to start the show. They are 10 out of 10 calls. Oh, jeez. And we've only just started. 13, 24, 10. Were they married for less than a year? Give us a buzz. Karen in Brisbane, good evening. This was your sister-in-law. Yeah, she um, basically, um, after the, the wedding night, um, that consummated their wedding, she went to basics. They, 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 she would have a shower in the morning and he was reading her diary and she was a person on a boat on a boat, on boat boat cruise and he was a captain 
when she was on other boats, he re- he read the book, her diary, and said seen that she was sleeping with his best mate. Oh, was, like, dude. Oh. I mean, Imagine not only doing that right, but then writing it down in your diary. Yeah, I know. <laughs> You're a psycho. Wow. That feels like it's like a prank. It's a prank. Ha ha. Gotcha. Uh, Bring out the sick. cameras. Come on. I've always been fascinated by adults that have diaries and mm. actually write down real secrets. Mm. Fascinating stuff. Like, why would you do that? Because that's only <laughs> going to get you in trouble. Like, I, it's a whole processing, oh, I do it to think it through and I do it for, like, therapy reasons. But, yeah, at the Great, end of the day, it. it's going to cause it. Yeah, it's just hard evidence. <laughs> Karen, thank you very much. Sue in Sydney, tell us, were they together for less than a year? Yes, my father-in-law, hi, guys, was married for a week. He ended up... My stories are boring compared to the last lot, but anyway, <laughs> he, uh, yeah, really tame. He ended up just having a fall causing himself a brain injury. He was 93 and very foolish and, yeah, yeah, uh, ended up in a nursing home and she wasn't going to put up with that, so she left him. Whoa. Hang on. So Hang on, hang on, hang on. Sorry, I just totally missed it. So he was 94 when he got married, had a fall. Yeah, 93. 93, yeah. Yeah, second marriage. Right. um, And, yeah, and then he had a fall. Yeah. Hit his head, caused a brain injury. Yeah. Ended up in a nursing home. And, um, yeah. She, and she left she, him. She left him, yeah, oh. yeah. So, oh. yeah, she said, so, sickness... yeah, boring story, sorry. <laughs> no, great story. Don't downsell it, Sue. That's crazy. Yeah. You got married so late in life the second time, but then to have the fall yeah. and then for her to leave yeah. him. Was she That's young, right. Sue? How yeah, it was pretty. How old was she? I think she was about 70, 78. Oh. Um, no one ever liked her. She was one of those women that we just thought, yeah, what do you want with a 94-year-old man? Oh, yeah, well, she wanted you know? the money. That she was a fox in the oh, hen well, house. Well, she didn't get it. I was a bit worried that she might, mm. but uh, no, she didn't. She didn't even try for that. So we were very lucky. Yeah. Wow. That I can't. I'm still getting over being 93 and then getting married. Yeah. Tying the knot. I mean, people would just be having like pre-chewed up food at the wedding reception. You know what I mean? Okay. <laughs> so the dance floor would finish at 7 p.m. Bit of Judge Judy news. You are about to enter the courtroom. We all know Judge Judy. <laughs> there was that little um, death scare there for a while. Yeah. Remember people thought she was dead? I That's think right. it was like two. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but no, she's alive and she's selling her New York uh, house. Yeah, yeah, her loft apartment. It's funny you mention that, Ben, because I actually made an offer on the place. I was actually trying to buy Whoa. Judge Judy's house. Guys, yeah. You were trying to buy Judge Judy's house, Liam. Someone's doing yeah, well. Yeah, no, I was. <laughs> she's pretty scary. She is Judith Scheinlin, um, as I learnt earlier today. Hello? Oh, hello, Judge Judy. Tell me your name. Stapleton, Liam Stapleton. What's your first name? Uh, it's Liam. Do you want to say something? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to um, make an offer. I'm speaking. Oh, okay, um, yeah. I-, I was just wondering if I could make an offer to buy your house. I don't understand your English. Just wanted to make an offer. I want you to speak slowly, speak clearly, Mm -hmm. so that I can understand you. Fair enough. Um, I want to buy your house, Judge Judy. Oh, I don't believe a word of that. No, like it's legit. That's baloney. I'd like to offer 400,000. Outrageous. Please, I mean, it's a solid offer. That's too bad. What about 500,000? Outrageous. Well, don't worry about it. I'm walking. Just a second. Oh, you... You want to sell now? Ah! Judge Judy, you slapped me. How's that? I didn't like that at all. Is there anything you want to do about it? No, no, I'm not going to do anything about it. Can I leave now, Judge Judy? No, 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 no. Why? I don't think I'm finished torturing you yet. Oh, God! Listen to me! Yes, yes, what? This is my house. As long as you live in my house, I own the air you breathe. You follow my rules. You act respectfully. Please, Judge Judy! That didn't go how I thought it was going to go. I I ended up getting out there. I ended up, I got through the bathroom window, but it was pretty touch and go there for a second. I knew she was scary, but not that scary. She is a very overbearing figure, for sure. 13 24 10, that is our number here at Nova. Did you have a front row seat to the PDA? So public display of affection. 
It's not for everybody. I personally don't like it. Liam, what about you? Don't feel comfortable with it, no. Bill, what do you think about PDA? I don't think it's that bad. I think everyone just talks it up too much. I like, thought really. that would be your answer, Bill, because yesterday on the show, do you remember what you said you and your partner Christian do? <laughs> said a lot of things. <laughs> um... Was it about the gym? It was about the gym, yes, yeah, correct. Yeah, okay. Well, I said that uh, we're that that couple um, at the gym. If we're both working out, then, you know, between sets for a bit of motivation, I'll go, like, squeeze his arms and, yeah, like, squeeze his bum yeah, and, like, uh, like, give him a kiss and, like, put my arms around him. And then, no. like, if he's doing squats, I'll walk past and, like, slap his ass. Or <laughs> If it were up to me and that was my gym, you'd have a lifetime ban from my gym. I feel like I'm on the edge anyway because I'm always like, oh, does someone want to use the equipment I'm on? And, like, you're listening to music, so you're kind of not picking up on cues. And, like, I'm very, nah, like, I nah. go I go to the gym with my wife and we don't talk to each other. We're like, I'm like, have a good session, like, headphones in, I'll see you in an hour. Like, we don't even. Nah. I look at her sometimes in the mirror just, like, make sure she hasn't dropped away on her head or something like that. But we don't, we don't say, like, hi or anything. We just, like. Yep. Get nah, through it. You know what? Mark this down. Gym couples are going to be like the next big thing. Gym what do you couples, mean? It's, it, they're, they're coming up like on my algorithm all the time, probably just because, you know, my algorithm. But it's like couples that go to the gym together and they move each other's weights around for each other. They help each other out. You'll help them by like doing sit-ups and like give them a kiss every time they come up. Or that, I mean, you'll that's be just spotting like, them. If you've got a home you, gym... like. Gym couple is the next thing, and I am just a shameless one with Christian. But then we we also, because he's a gym coach, if I'm there, we have like a no touching rule where I can't touch him. It just it, to me, <laughs> it feels like you're twelve. It feels like something a twelve. Yeah, if so, if someone was doing sit ups and kissing someone in front of me, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'd I'd ask them to leave. Absolutely, I'd say hey. I don't, but it's I'm not, not really like it doesn't. It's, it's not affecting you. Like, Thirteen, <laughs> twenty four, ten. We're looking for PDAs. Did you have to witness a bit of public affection? Ingrid joins us now in the Gold Coast. Go for it. Hello. So this happened to me at a festival. Mm. Um, I felt like it was a, like Romeo and Juliet happening before my eyes. So there was a group of boys and a group of girls and they slowly made their way towards each other. And this cute little boy and girl started, you know, just eyeing each other off and started kissing. And I thought, oh, that's cute. You know, you do you, boo. Um, but as the night progressed, I saw the whole thing play out and um, they got to third base in front of me. Whoa! <laughs> Sheesh. Now, Too far. Now, I'm I'm a little behind on my... is mm-hmm. So four is the home run. So that's well, four, like, yeah, so fourth base huh, is home run. So it's just one back from that. So it's like... Yep. I'll, I'll do the signals because it's, you know, is it a bit of this? Yep, bit, bit of that. Bit, yeah, yeah. Bit of these ones. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm so glad this is an audio meeting. We're going to have to delete that footage from the studio cameras. <laughs> no, it's just clarify for me. Ingrid, thank you very much for sharing. You're in the running for a 12 month <laughs> binge subscription. 132410 is our number. Did you have a front row seat to a PDA? Yeah, it's also a bit of this. <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> delete that. Out. Delete that footage. Uh, Lauren in Sydney, what did you witness? Hi, so we went out to a nightclub with a bunch of friends. Uh, we were watching one of our friends uh, who was single, you know, make his move with this girl. Um, you know, he's chatting for her for half the night, you know, they're kind of getting a bit touchy-feely. Uh, out of nowhere, this scrawny little guy with this massive mullet just kind of segues in between them. Uh, he's got his hands all over this girl, and a few minutes in, they just started smacking on, like just started kissing each other. <laughs> so our friend just kind of had to third wheel his way out of that situation. <laughs> Lauren, snooze you lose. I mean, it's sad for your mate, but like this guy came in and he shot his shot and he got it. Aisha in Brisbane, good evening. Tell us about the public display of affection that you witnessed. Okay, so this was when I was out with my friends for one of my birthdays. I'm super excited to finally share this. Um, <laughs> there was this couple sitting outside the club where we were at, and there's people everywhere. And for some reason, they decided that was where they were going to, you know, get it all on and start snogging for a long time. And I thought, okay, I should probably tell her that I can see toilet paper hanging out of her skirt. Oh! So um, I go to tell her and she's got this mean look on her face. She didn't want a bar of it. So I'm like, you know what? I'll walk away. You can keep snogging with your toilet paper sticking out. Yeah. 
<laughs> Why not? I mean, you tried to do the right thing. Just let her have it. Uh, Paige in Brizzy, PDA, what did you witness? I was in the hospital getting my appendix out and I was in the waiting room and the people in front of me were just full on macking on in the waiting room. Oh, not in the waiting room. Wow. There's yeah. children here. This is a <laughs> hospital. Yeah, I'm sitting there like crippled over in severe pain and the last thing I want to see is you making out with your girlfriend. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you're so hot when your collarbone's flopping around. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they were going for like life-changing surgery. You know? uh, not the place. Paige, <laughs> thank you very much. Keep these coming through. 13, 24, 10. Did you witness some PDA that maybe went too far? Mick, in Melbourne, what happened? Yeah, g'day, neighbours, A-team um, and Bell. And um, anyway, so... Um, <laughs> Yeah. Oh, sorry, Bell. Oh, yeah, that was a direct. That's wasn't okay. Um, nah, you're a good. Yeah. Mix. Sorry. I, I, I was. I was. I was living in London. Um. And we. I was working on a building site that looked uh, directly across the road, probably about four or five stories high, into a an adjacent building. Mm-hmm. And this girl used to deliberately, well, what seemed deliberately, get changed in front of the lads all the time. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh. Yeah. I see. So yeah. This is, this is... And, and it became. Yeah. It became a bit of a ritual. If that makes sense, like you know, the, the, they'd be like, "Oh, she's there, she's there," and everyone'd be like, "Oh, yes." <laughs> and um, and and uh, and then one day, she stepped it up, and uh, we we had the full on session go on in front of everyone. Whoa! Like, oh, so my, just oh to, just just to clarify, solo session or was there a partner? Oh no no no! She had a, she had a, a, a fellow with her. Yeah right. I wonder if he knew. Yeah, because sure. I'm I'm glad you said okay that it got to there was someone else there because. I was like, yeah, this is not PDA. This is more peeping time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure she knew. <laughs> uh, Jared uh, in Melbourne, tell us about the PDA that went too far. Um, so I was at the football down in Geelong, mm-hmm. uh, Geelong West Richmond, and uh, there was a couple next to me, and they were getting a bit handsy and kissing a bit. And um, at half time, they put a blanket over their lap, <laughs> and I, I started noticing the. Bit of bit of movement underneath mm-hmm. the blanket, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and um, this guy was being pleasured by this girl with her hand. Oh, um, he was getting pleasured at the cattery. Yeah, uh, at halftime of Geelong versus Richmond, Richmond supporters, of course. <laughs> wow! <laughs> wow, <Richmond supporters>. wow <laughs> at the footy. I just really love Dustin Martin. <laughs> <laughs> Game 300. He's playing so well. Put the blanket over me. <laughs> uh, Shelby, uh, did you witness a PDA? Yes, I did. Um, when I used to do security about 10 years ago and I was doing the fireworks down on the beach, down on the Gold Coast. Mm. And, um, yeah, it was a Happy New Year fireworks and people were going in the New Year with a bang right in front of everybody. On the beach? Yep, on the beach. Wow. So, Shelby, when you're a security, did you have to intervene? I had to just go and um, nudge their foot and say, look, there's a time and place. There's kids here. Can you take that somewhere else? Yeah, it's a bit, <laughs> yeah. Off. It's a bit off when there's kids running around. Nudge, yeah. Nudging the foot. That, I mean, that wouldn't have t- if they were in the, the throes of passion, I'm sure I nudged the foot. They wouldn't have even realised, yeah. you know? Yeah. Well, Shelby, thanks for calling. You have a great night. <laughs> Will do. You too. So, just, just to clarify, though, Shelby, do you mean like a... Yeah. Like... You know, you said, "Oh, with a bang!" Like, do you mean like a, you know, like a bang? Like, yeah, they were doing the deed. Like, oh, seriously? <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. it. Attention, all Taylor Swift fans. <laughs> Now we know she can write amazing songs. She can fill arenas. She can sing. She can dance. Well, I mean, not really dance, but she can do the rest of that stuff. But we can add a new skill. To that list. Apparently, she's a great chef, according to her partner, Travis Kelsey. Taylor makes a great uh, Pop-Tart and cinnamon roll. Oh, Anthony Bourdain's in. She she does (laughs) Pop-Tarts. Did he say Pop-Tarts and cinnamon rolls? I'm pretty sure you just put a Pop-Tart in a toaster. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's sugar. It's sugar yeah. on, like, I don't even know yeah, bread. I mean, it's, it's, yeah, it's biscuit. It's a, it's a biscuit and fatty cream and so biscuit. So she, yeah, she <laughs> reheats a good Pop-Tart. It's not, yeah, it's not Nigella, but that's why tonight I wanted to do Australia's Worst Cook. If you'd like to nominate them, um, you know, maybe it's the person you're living with, maybe it's a parent. I think my dad would be up there. Um, my mum did most of the cooking in our house and... If she ever worked late or anything like that and you had a dad dinner, you you really, 
you really had to grit your teeth and just get through it. I remember one time um, he just cooked like about three kilos of mashed potato mm-hmm. and then he just cooked a whole packet of sausages mm-hmm. and then he just stuck the sausages in the potato like a sausage hedgehog. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, that was our dinner. And then we all just like picked a bit of the potato and the sausage. And, ah, it tasted all right, but I was just like, what is this? I think I've gotten better with age, but I definitely used to be Australia's worst cook. When I was a bachelor, I would buy the 125 gram tins of uh, the tuna, like the home brand spring water tuna. Yeah. And I'd dump them into a bowl and then I'd buy the, you know, the artificial lemon in a bottle. Yeah. And I'd squirt that on there for a bit of acidity. So, like, make your own. And then I'd get white pepper, and I would just dump white pepper on it, and then I'd <laughs> mix it up, and I would eat that religiously every single day. I just lived off I mean, canned it's, tuna. To be fair, that's not bad protein. Like, it's like it's kind of it's gross, but at least you're sort of eating semi-healthy, I suppose. But there was so much lemon on it, it would burn your eyebrows off. <laughs> In like, hindsight. Like you were training yourself up <laughs> yeah. to the acidity. If, if, a, if a normal human went up to it, it would just burn their mouth. Uh, Eleanor joins us now in Sydney. Is this you or somebody else you know? I'm going to dob in my hubby. Okay. Oh, yeah. Worst cook in Australia. What's he doing? So in 10 years, he's cooked for me once. It was baked beans. The toast was cold and the baked beans were both burnt and mashed. Wow. That's hard to, that's hard to F up. That's for sure. Almost like a puree, I yeah. guess. Yeah, because you microwave the beans, don't you? Christine, what about you? Uh, do you think you're Australia's worst cook? Are you dobbing someone in? I'm dobbing my daughter in. She cooked me a chicken pie. The chicken was raw. The bottom of the pastry was raw. raw and the only thing that was crispy was the top. Oh, oh not good. Just a bit of pink chook in a pie. Uh, Karen, it's a self-nom. You're Australia's worst yes. cook. Oh, I'm so bad. Oh, go I on. Years ago, when I was married, I bought one of those slow cookers. And I thought, well, I'll go get the stuff. I put it all in the morning, went to work, I come home, and I took those off and go, oh, it doesn't look too good, but that's what it's supposed to look like. I served it up. The kids and my husband took a taste. <laughs> they ran out the house to get pie, and I thought, well, I'll give it to my dog, which is a Labrador. They eat everything. Mm-hmm. I put it in the dog bowl. The dog came up and ran away. Yeah, <laughs> it's not good when the she dog's not eat- eating it, Karen. Even your dog didn't touch your slow cooker meal. Wow. All right, look, let's keep these going. 13, 24, 10. Tyson in Brisbane, could it be you? Yeah, probably is, eh? Yeah, why is that, Tyson? So the kids wanted spaghetti bolognese for dinner. Mm. I burnt the mince first, tried oh, to hide nice. it with the sauce, yeah, and then um, cooking that and it dried right out. Got onto the pasta, boiled the pasta dry and burnt to the frigging saucepan. Oh, I didn't even know you could do that. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm shit cooked, that's why. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, nice. so you had to scrape the dry pasta out of the pot right. and then you sort of... It was like of... black burnt in the end day, the bottom of it. It wasn't good. What did the kids say, Tyson? Yeah. Oh, they didn't like it. They just always say to me now, we never want spaghetti bolognese ever again. Yeah. So what do you normally do, just maccas? Nah, just cook them up some nuggets in the air fryer. <laughs> <laughs> they they don't want spag bowl anymore because they think, like, ash is spaghetti bolognese. Yeah. When, when they go back to their mums and she wants to cook it, they're like, they always tell her the story and how they hate it. Yeah. I'll turn them against it, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, right. Well, Tyson, how often are you doing nuggets? Like, how often you got them? I have them Thursdays to Sundays, so, like, two nights a week, and then the other night I cook some veggies usually and oh, sausages. Good. Cause it's easier. Did you say veggies and sausages? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I burnt, I burnt the potato a few times, too. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Tyson, so far you are the front runner yeah. for Australia's worst cook. Don't go anywhere, okay? <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's, Don't go anywhere. That's pretty bad. Uh, Leanne in Sydney, you're also self-nominating. Do you think you're even a worse cook than Tyson? Oh, most definitely. Um, there's days I serve up my uh, mashed patty with lumps in it. I've been known to cook fish in the microwave and burn it. Oh. Uh, oh. I'm scared every time she cooks. I think she's going to kill me sometimes. Oh, is it- oh sorry, we've got a new player. So, did, <laughs> sorry, is that is that uh, your daughter, Leanne? Or are we speaking to your kid now? Yeah, my daughter. Oh, yeah. hi. Sorry, I did with the 
I just thought you were talking in third person. I thought we had like a Bates Motel thing going on where you were like Jekyll and Hyde or something, just like, yeah, she cooks for That was so confusing. Oh, man. That was scary. Oh, well, thanks, Leanne. <laughs> yes, it cooks for us. It puts the lotion on its skin. <laughs> Nicole in Melbourne, good evening. Uh, is this yourself who's the worst cook or somebody else? I'm nominating myself. Mm-hmm. Um, so I hate cooking so much and I want to make the process as quick and easy as possible um, that I've dedicated an Instagram page um, for quick two ingredient recipes. Two? Um, yeah. So, so you, can never, you can never do more than two ingredients in one never, dish? No. Nah. So things like noodles with hot water, mm-hmm. um, peanut butter on the <laughs> so Hang noo- on. So for like two minute noodles, you're counting the water as one of the ingredients. Like that's Definitely. just cooking noodles. <laughs> no seasoning can be put on those yeah. noodles. That's, Nicole, what's your optional. like, yeah, what's your like um, best dish you reckon? I reckon I can make bread with two ingredients. So it's just self-raising flour and Greek yogurt. Um, oh. But I've got to say, if I had to pick one dish, it would be cheese toasty. Good for <laughs> breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Yeah, you, yeah. Well, it's hard to <laughs> hard to stuff it up. Yeah. What's your What's your best filling you put in there? Cheese. Yeah, you know? I thought so. I just had to check. I just had to check, Nicole. Um, look, I don't think we can go past Tyson, right? Yeah, Nugget Dad. How you doing, Tyson? Yeah, good. <laughs> Mate, thanks again for the better, call. Better I don't have the kids tonight to cook dinner for. Well, yeah. that's true. So what are you what are you cooking for yourself then, man? Oh, I'm going to cook some um, pork steaks if I don't burn them. Oh, it's sweet. So you, you're getting a better dinner than the kids. Oh, yeah. I stand by it all the time. When they're over, you don't get time to stand by the dinner. They yeah, right. Got you. Because yeah. you're trying to keep them they, occupied. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, look, Tyson, now the best thing is you've got yourself a 12-month binge subscription so oh, awesome. you can put the telly on and focus on the dinner. Oh, yeah. That sounds like a plan. Tomorrow night we'll be the go then. Yeah, right, no guys. worries, mate. You enjoy the nugs. You enjoy the the snags and the veggies. I think we found Australia's worst chef. Thank you very much, Tyson. <laughs> Benson Boone on Nova with Ben, Liam and Bell. 13, 24, 10. Ladies, have you flashed? Uh, there is a lovely woman who is remaining anonymous. Uh, she wants to go by the name Kate over in the US. She went viral last week because she flashed at a hockey game and now she has explained why. The handful of cheesies I ate all day and the eight Trulies I drank in the first period, uh, it was definitely inspiring. I saw the video for research purposes and I thought for sure that she was like an OnlyFans person just trying to get some clout. Get some followers. Yeah, well, certainly could get into the business. Well, she confirmed as well. Um, she's also confirmed in an interview that they are fake, which, um, yeah, she designed them herself and she's very proud of them, but she wants to remain anonymous. She doesn't want her identity out there. She just did it for a bit of fun. After a few drinks, move on. Wow. And that's it. But, hey, good on her. She's had not... to let the girls out. Yep, yep. And like you heard just then, she just said, look, just got a bit swept up, did it. Because you're also thinking like, my God, like it's really impressive the – the nipple action there, but obviously they're in a they're in an ice arena. Mm-hmm. It's very it's extremely cold in there. They're all like entirely rugged up. Yeah. It's really weird because all the videos I've seen there, it's all been blurred. How did we see that? Reddit. <laughs> Flash! Ah! Did you get your boobs out? Thirteen twenty four ten. Did you? Anon in Sydney, you flashed someone. Hi, yes, I did. <laughs> what you, happened? You forgot you wanted to be called Anon, didn't you, there? <laughs> I so. know. I was like, am I the only Anonymous? <laughs> yeah, no, it's you. You're the one. <laughs> yeah, I um, I was hosting a little party. This is a while ago now, but I was hosting a party with my girlfriends in the garage and we ordered some pizza. And um, when the pizza boy arrived, we said, hey, can we get this pizza for free if we give you a flash? And yeah, he flashed us a smile and we flashed him our boobs and got a free pizza. Such a, oh. It's such a funny question to ask because, of course, he's going to say yes. Like <laughs> yeah. He's never going to say no to yeah, that. What a nerd if he's like, no, nah, you have to give me the $17.50. I need my money. <laughs> <laughs> but does that mean he had to pay for it? Yeah, well, he's That's all right, so... mate. He just saw, you know, three sets of boobs. He's fine. And on um, how did the pizza boy react? Well, he gave us a big smile and, of course, he looked a little bit flushed and embarrassed and then... Um, my sister actually went a bit a step further and 
and tried to um, spin his little spinny belt because she was cracking up laughing and saw how nervous he was and then he just sort of walked away. Yeah, I mean, right. surely you know, becoming a pizza man or a pool cleaner or one of those jobs, surely you know that one day you can rock up to a house and it's like, oh my God, it's just like the movies I've seen. You know what I mean? <laughs> and Norm, thank you very much. Ashley in Sydney, tell us about your flashing story. Hi, guys. So this was a couple of years ago, but um, I was at an NRL game and um, my team finally scored mm-hmm. and I was very excited and my girlfriend said, well, you know, get excited and flash the crowd. And um, as my shirt came up, the cameraman <laughs> camera came round. No. And lo and behold, uh, my boobies were on TV. Whoa! And um, I refused to take my shirt down. I'm like, I'm not doing it. You can't see my face. Nobody will recognise these things. So and did anybody, did anybody oh. ever recognise you from being on the telly? Uh, look, there, there was a lot of conversation um, through Facebook. You know, did you see the chick that flashed? And I was like, <laughs> oh, my God, this is horrifying. Oh. Oh, um, Ashley. Yeah. Especially when they, happened. it'd be funny if it was one of those things when they do like for Toyota and it's like the yeah. dance cam and it's like, oh, look at this kid doing his moves and whoa, <laughs> they might win a, you know, $20 voucher and then it comes onto you and you're like, <laughs> oh, I love that. No, Ashley, good on you. Uh, Shane in Sydney joins us now. Shane, did you flush? No, no, not myself. It's my mother. Oh, Your mum. No. Come on, mum. <laughs> um,. Every time we have a family party, she puts on Hey Jude and um, she whacks them out. I bet Uncle Roger loves it. (laughs) (laughs) And it's time for... The Currency Quiz! Amy in Melbourne, you ready to win some cash? I sure am. All right, well, let's spin the wheel and find out what currency you're playing for tonight. Fingers crossed for the US dollar. It's looking pretty strong at the moment. Whoa! 50,000 Vietnamese dong, which works out to be $2.97 Australian. $50,000. Wow. Okay, Amy. Money is money. Money, money, is, money is, is money. Money is money. And times are tough. And uh, look, if you can get these next five questions right, you are going to be a 50,000 donkey millionaire. Um, <laughs> what's that? Yeah, whatever. <laughs> 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 hey, someone stuck a picture of Wallace from Wallace and Gromit's head on the portrait of King Charles. What food does Wallace famously like? Um, I'm going to take a guess and just say pizza. Oh, no dong for you, unfortunately, tonight, Amy. Uh, Sam in Melbourne, do you know what Wallace likes, the food? Is it dog food? No, that's Gromit. That's the dog. Wallace is the man. He has the green vest. Georgia and Sydney, do you know what food Wallace likes? <laughs> she dropped oh, off. Oh, my God. Up. This no, is an she... easy question. Daniel in Melbourne, do you know what food Wallace likes? Yeah, mate, love cheese. Cheese! Wensley Dale Gromit. That's exactly right. Uh, Billy Ray Cyrus has dumped his Aussie wife after only a few months of marriage. According to his 90s hit, what part of his body was achy breaky? <laughs> uh, I'd have to say his back. His achy breaky back. Jesus Christ. Wow. <laughs> These questions are supposed to be We're easy. trying to give you're you guys dong. For like, you're playing for like $2 Australian. We're trying to feed you some dong here and no one wants it. Uh, I mean, it's $2.97 if we round it up. That's mm-hmm. a lush three bucks right there. Jeez. Kate in Sydney, you know the famous Billy Ray Cyrus song, Aggie Breaky? What? Uh, she's done it. Uh, France has added a tax on ultra-fast fashion. Uh, which member of this team regularly wears sheen clothing? Is it me? Is it Ben? Or Belle? <laughs> Bell. It is Bell. I bought it once a oh, very no. long time no, ago. She's, she's a fiend for it. That's Shane, what you're wearing tonight. I know <laughs> it. Uh, tomorrow is Mary Kay Olsen's 38th birthday. Fun fact, also my birthday. Uh, which other Olsen is celebrating a birthday tomorrow? Ashley. Yes! Last question here. This is for 50,000 Vietnamese dong, remember, Kate? It's the currency quiz. Joe Biden's son got found guilty of gun crimes. In America overnight. They do love their guns. Is Joe Biden in his 70s, 80s or 90s? Uh, He's in his 70s. He's in his 80s. You won the (laughs) dog! Kate, congratulations! 
Thank you. <laughs> would you like us to wire the dong over or would you like us to bring it in a suitcase? Suitcase, please. What are you going to spend your 50000 on? <laughs> it doesn't even get me a coffee. <laughs> well... I mean, come on, put a smile on. <laughs> we're, just, we're just trying to do a nice thing here. Make the promo sound good. <laughs> Say oh, thank you. No. no, Kate, thanks for playing. You have a great night. Thank you. You know what? If you want, you can trade the 50,000 dong for a show-branded fedora. Sure. She took the fedora. I didn't think you'd do that. <laughs> All right, we'll find you a fedora. Get Kate a fedora. Start. Uh, we were speaking about public displays of affection. Earlier in the show, Ben and I aren't big fans of PDA. Belle's all for it. She's into it. It's not hurting anyone else. Why not? Go for it. I mean, not to the level of some of the calls we're getting, though. No. Well, okay, there's a difference between PDA and then, like, being really inappropriate. Yeah. We were getting all sorts of calls, like public sessions, things like that. Still getting calls for public displays of affection. Even now, Dan in Brizzy joins us. Good evening, Dan. How you doing? Oh, top of the world, guys. Oh, that's that's a good attitude to have. I'd love to hear it, man. Um, tell us about the public display of affection you witnessed. All right. Well, we were uh, Christmas lunch at uh, one of those five-star hotels, and this was back in the day when the buffet was a big thing. Oh, and yeah, uh, that. yeah, you remember the buffet before the COVID days? Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> yep. But anyway, these uh, two people absolutely going for it all over the buffet. Oh, <laughs> they, yeah! They grab, they grab the chocolate mousse. They get the spoon. They start feeding it to each to each other. No, transferring it. Oh, transferring it between their mouths. It was. I've seen some pretty pretty big stuff in Amsterdam, and this was. I tell you, this popped it up. I tell you. <laughs> so this was like worse than like a like a Dutch sex show. <laughs> oh, this was this was shocking. I um, I um. I've never had chocolate mousse ever again after that. They <laughs> put the spoon back in the bowl oh. and left it there. This couple were going, who hadn't seen it, were about to go and help themselves to some dessert. I was just like, no, 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 guys. Oh. I, have, I have to save you. Um, but that was it. It was it was up there, I tell you. Yeah. Never seen anything like it. It's really unexpected, though, because you said it was like five-star like hotel that you never really see that that's amazing hopefully they stayed away from the spring rolls mm. i don't even know what what are you feeling? well i mean they were you know they were they were playing with the food right i would have gone like carrot what, this, what do you think what do you think there's a section of the buffet bill that's just raw carrots <laughs> you think there's a raw carrot no section of the buffet no one is using a spring roll well i know not in <laughs> the real world but in the comedy world, I think a spring roll is something that would be at a buffet, Bill. But it's also penis shape. So that's why I said spring roll, Bill. <laughs> Bill, we got to get out of here, though. Make way for Smallsy opening up the surgery next. Bill, give me one good reason to listen to the podcast. Uh, it's great. It's great fun. We had a lot of fun tonight. You'll love it. Zero substance in that. <laughs> um, I mean, we spoke to tons of people, Ben, uh, who were married for less than a year. How's that one that... that- this woman, right, she drove home 12 hours because she missed her flight, mm. caught her husband doing the unthinkable, and then she ended up putting him in jail. That's how angry she was. Now, that's a reason to listen to a podcast, Liam. Thank you very much. Bell, once again, I got you, one. I got disappointed one. me hey, and uh, the show. If you want, um, there's my pen. Just take some notes. Liam went to Judge Judy's house. <laughs> uh, it doesn't context, matter. It needs context. Yeah. Oh. No one knows what you're talking about. <laughs> well, then listen to the podcast. Good stuff, Liam. Thanks, man. <laughs> For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcasts.com.au.